Today we're going to look at Photoshop and in particular Photoshop's ability to create animation and we're going to use that for rotoscoping in this example but it can also be used for various other video applications such as matte painting and just conventional animation or motion typography um, but we're going to look at rotoscoping because it covers a lot of the key features that Photoshop has in regards to working with video. Now we are working with Photoshop CS4 Extended, but all the features we're going to be looking at today are in Photoshop CS3 Extended and above. Now to begin with, we're going to change Photoshop's workspace from the standard default setting to video. Now this will change some what windows Photoshop displays and will adjust certain information so that we can operate video within Photoshop easily. To do this, we go to the window drop down menu and go to workspace and we can then select video. Photoshop will then load up some new windows and change what it shows as normal. So we will now have an animation timeline and a clone source window as well as the normal layers, channels and paths. Once we've done that we are now ready to create our new document. We do this in the exact same way as normal by going File, New, and we're going to use one of Photoshop's presets to create our blank canvas. It is a film and video preset, and then in the size panel, we then select the format of our video project that we're producing for. Our video project in this example is a full HD project, so we select 1080p, and that will dial in the correct resolution for us and then we click OK to create our canvas. Now we have our blank canvas, we can see that there's some guides already present. These are the title safe and the action safe and we can make these visible or invisible in the normal manner. Now we're going to be rotoscoping today. Rotoscoping is a process of filming motion of any action and then tracing each individual frame of that action so that we can create very naturalistic smooth movement. Um, whether we are going to be rotoscoping or working directly onto video in any way, we can open video into Photoshop by going File, Open, and then we can select our video file. Okay. So we've got our video here, and we can see in the timeline it has all the layer information there. If we press the play button, it'll play back the video at usually quite a low frame rate compared to normal. Now we want to bring this video into our project, so we do that in the same way as you would normally do. So I'm going to snap that off and drag the layer into my project. And then I'll close that. Now as you can see, my video is not the same resolution as my working canvas. So I'm just going to free transform it or transform scale so I can adjust its size. When I do this with video, it will need to be converted to a smart object layer. And that's okay, we just click convert and now we can Position our video in the top corner, and you're holding down our shift key, scale our video so it fills the whole canvas. Now we can press play again, and it will play back one frame at a time at a vastly reduced frame rate to normal. Now this video is reasonably long. I can move my playhead down here back and forth to help travel through my video. And when I find the portion that I want to rotoscope, I can narrow down my timeline or my workspace to that portion of the video. This save system resources also allows me just to focus on one portion of a video that I'm working on at a time. And to focus on a section, all I do is drag these in and out markers that are on my timeline to the in point 
and the point where I want my video works the works is my video to stop and drag my out point to match there as well. Now when I play back it will load through each frame one at a time but then play back slightly smoother after that. Now to produce animation or rotoscoping we use a special kind of layer called a video layer. Now video layers are incredibly useful things and to create a new one we go to layer, video layers, new blank video layer and we'll see now in our layers tab there's a new layer but we know it's a video layer because there's this little film icon on the layer there. So if we select that we'll make our video invisible just now. If I draw on this this layer and then I use my arrow keys to move to the next frame in my video the drawing disappears. Any drawing you produce in a video layer is specific to the frame that you drew it on which means this is perfect for animation because you can move through the layers one at a time using your arrow keys and create a new drawing on each to create animation. Now I can use my video as a guide to trace so I can rotoscope my image, my video, onto my video layer and that will play back as an animation. So I'm going to lock my video layer so I don't accidentally do anything to that. And I'm going to prepare my brush for tracing my image. Now this brush might not be suitable. So I'm going to go to Window, Brushes, so I can use the brush dynamics to create something that's more suitable for my style that I'm going to be producing. So I'm going to slim down my line Okay, and when I'm happy with my line, So now I'm happy with my brush, I'm now ready to trace my animation. Ideally you would use a graphics tablet for this as that will give you the best results. So I'm going to trace the outline here. Now obviously the longer you devote to tracing each frame of the video, the better the result. I'm just going to be going very quickly here. Okay, so we can see our drawing there. It's rather crude, but we're just going to be working quite quickly. And then we can move to the next frame and our drawing has disappeared. So we will repeat the process.
and if we make our video invisible, we can move between those two frames and see the adjustment. Now, in conventional animation, you will have lots of thin she sheets of paper layered on top of each other, allowing you to see through the paper to other drawings to see as the, how the movement shifts. We can achieve the same effect in Photoshop by using this little tool down here called the onion skin, which toggles onion skinning off and on. Onion skinning basically overlays frames before the point of your playhead and after the point of your playhead thus allowing you to see the change in your drawing. So we select that on it'll create an overlay and we can see how the difference between different frames. So it'll show the frame before and the frame after. I can turn that off and on to make our life more easy. We can also lower the opacity of our video layer to make the onion skinning more visible. Now if we were rotoscoping, as you can imagine, it would take quite a long time to draw out each individual frame. But if you are new to animation, or you want to create very naturalistic movement, this is still a faster and less frustrating way of producing an animation. It will also give you a very specific look to how to the movement in your animation, which you might want to replicate. Now, uh, you can also change the settings of onions, the onion skin setting by clicking down here. And we have the onion skin settings option. We can then decide how many frames before what our current frame it displays and the number of frames afterwards. The opacity and the blend mode. So you can change how it displays depending on your personal preference or the colours that you're working with. Now, you will do this for every single frame, drawing each frame, and you would end up with something like this. So if we play that back, First time that plays back, it will usually play back quite slowly as it's rendering each frame as it goes. And then it will play back usually quite more smoothly, but usually with still a reasonable amount of lag. So we can get a preview of what our animation is going to look like and how our motion is working. Now, we can do a few different things to make our animation look more interesting. We could, for instance, colour an animation in with a second video layer and then you will literally just paint in all the detail work all the color work of a particular frame And you would repeat this process for 
for each individual frame. You would go and you would back paint from the highlights to the shadows, um, or you could use multiple layers to create different highlight tones and subtle tones, and you could use things like the burn tool to add shading and depth. Um, doing this for each individual frame, so you can spend quite a lot of time colouring. If you wanted to place your animation upon a surface, such as a paper texture, you could open that and bring that into your project as a separate conventional layer. And by adjusting the channel mode of your video layer, you can change how the line Now, when you're working with video and video layers in Photoshop, you're also able to use filters to change the look of your source video. So, we have some filters that we've applied to this video. So we can apply different filters. And then by also using our video line, we can then create a certain specific look. So we can use our source video and use the fo fo uh, by applying Photoshop filters to our source video, we can create a look that would be either very time consuming or quite difficult to achieve um, by painting in the background. When we have finished our animation shot and we're ready to export it from Photoshop, we have two options. We can either export our video as a image sequence or we can export it as a rendered video file ready for editing. To do either of these, we go to File, Export, render video and the first thing we do is we give it a name we select the location for it to be saved and then we go move down the window to the file options if we want a quick time export we have a few options of different file types we want it to be a MOV file so we'll select quick time movie and we will select settings as well. And this will bring up the QuickTime compressor options. So we want video and we're going to look in the settings so we can choose our codec and quality settings. So we select there. And we're going to set our frame rate to 25 frames per second, which is the frame rate for standard definition and high definition video in the UK and Europe. And in the compression type, we're going to select our codec. Now, if you just want a conventional video um, and all your colouring and background is there then I would suggest using Apple ProRes 422HQ for high quality. If you have an animation which has any areas of transparency and you wish to hold on to those areas of transparency so you can overlay your animation onto another piece of video um, for example, if you're producing a piece of motion typography, then the codecs I would advise are 
animation if you're working with Final Cut 6 or below or in an alternative editing program. Or if you're working with Final Cut 7 and above, Apple ProRes 4444. Now the reason we want to select those two codecs is they're the only two codecs that withhold the alpha channel. The alpha channel is, in Photoshop terms, is the transparency. The portion of a layer that has not got any drawing information on is considered the alpha channel in regards to video. And if we bring our video with an alpha channel into our editing program, we can access that information and use our animation as an overlay over an existing piece of footage, such as if we were producing a lower third or some motion typography, titles, etc. If you choose this f compressor for that purpose, in the depth, you want to make sure it's millions of colors plus, as the plus is the alpha channel. So now we have selected all of our options here. We're going to select OK, and then click OK again. Now you would have noticed in our settings, the sound is grayed out. Photoshop can play back the audio from a video file, but it cannot process and export it out. Now, you can also select the size if you want to downscale your work for any particular reason. We can also select image sequence and the file type if we were wanting to create a image sequence if for working within a later date. The range decides how much of our timeline we're going to render. You can either select all frames, manually put dial in your f start and out frame, or you can use your in and out points that we set in our for our workspace on our timeline um, by using the currently selected frames. In our render option for the alpha channel, there's a few different options. Um, Pre-multiply with black, white and colour. Depending on the colours within your animation, these will give different results. So it's worth doing some short renders and exports and testing which one produces the best outcome for your project. Once we've done all this, we simply click Render. Once Photoshop has finished exporting, we can then open our movie and we can then play it back. We can also use this technique to create typography, such as this, or for a variety of other effects.